that's really funny. Hey, it's six in the morning here. I've got my own light flash team. light team because it's that early. So we're here at, uh, oh, my light team's following me around. So we're here at uh, PGA uh, National. National. It's really early, I can't think. Lin behind me, he flashed that light on that bus. No, the light's not big enough. So that's Lin, Lin University's bus. Light team, light team, I need you again. Ah, there we go. There he is. Uh, so we're gonna see what it is like uh, as a college golfer uh, at a tournament here in Florida. Um, yeah, let's just go check it out because I can't think right now. Hey guys, we're here on the range at the Shark Invitational here in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. This is the famous course they play the Honda Classic. This is a Division II and an NIA tournament. We've got schools like Kaiser here, um, NSU, which is actually sponsoring the tournament. We've got Lynn University, Embry Riddle, and actually one of our clients here, you see in the background, Bo is hitting some balls on the range right now. We've got about actually 15% of the field are actually our ASM clients. So it's good to see them come and hang out. It's one of the advantages of being here in South Florida is that we're so close we can come to these tournaments, meet our clients and see how they're doing, progressing to the next stage, which is pro tour golf, which I know they all want to do. So we're going to go check it out, see how they're playing, go on the course a bit and uh, show you what a, a kind of a tournament looks like at Division 2 NAI level. <laughs> Currently in, in seventh position here in the uh, Formula One PJ Championships. <laughs> we are racing for the shotgun start. We're coming to our first chicane. Brendan's going to take this corner well. Oh, he clips the apex. Nicely done, Brendan. Nicely done. Now it's a straight. We're doing 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour. It's going to change gear to second. <sighs> Hitting some traffic, it's hard to, to overtake on this circuit. and uh, Bo's on the uh, the course. Two other athletes in one group, pretty good. Finding the golf, mate. It's good right now, yeah. One of our guys is six under par. Um, gonna lead the tournament soon, so we're all checking out this guy right now. It's from Eckerd College. Um, been talking there for a long time. Fortunately, you put in the trees on this one, but luckily on Palm Beach Golf Course or Palm Beach Gardens, uh, the trees aren't that bad. As you can see, there isn't many, but there is water. You do not want to be in that alligator alley right there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So on 
the 10th hole in the PGA here for the uh, Shark Invitational. Just see there, Leonardo just hit the ball. Uh, we're following Leonardo and uh, Bo Conrad today. Um, it's actually two of our ASM clients. Uh, great guys, hitting the ball really well, playing well. With Brendan Coach has also just turned up as well. So I'm gonna follow them for a few more holes, um, see how they do, and then head back to the office. So we're just heading back to the office now. Just gonna catch a ride from Brendan. I'm gonna get in the car. So basically, a lot of you are probably wondering, okay, what is the difference between D1, D2, NIA golf, junior college? How do I know if I'm good enough? And really the standard today was really high. Like any of these players playing at this level today, division two, NIA, these are the, probably the best division two NIA programs in the country. Um, so actually, it's one of our partners, Johan Creeks Tennis Academy over there as well. There we go. There we go. So if you also play tennis, you can come to Johan Creeks Just Tennis to Academy. Just chime in, guys. So today, obviously, we're at Honda Classic uh, playing champion course. Yeah. So leading guy right now, eight under par. So That's pretty kind of good. kind of shows you the yeah. caliber level. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the level's really high. I mean, like, the standard's high. This is probably one of the better, probably, if not the best, uh, golf conference for D2 NIA mm -hmm. in the country. So it's going to be higher than, say, the standard across America. So to get into like a program, like any of these programs, like NSU, Lynn, um, Embry-Riddle, who else was here? Tampa. Tampa. Was Rollins here? Uh, Rollins was not here yet. St. Leo though. St. Leo. I mean, like all the best Florida schools are here today um, at Division Two in an in in NIA level. And if you want to play in this setup, then you have to have results at least three, four years strong. When I mean results, like pretty much when you're 14, 15, you need to be start collecting a nice resume of tournaments you're playing in, but not just playing in tournaments, like getting good results. Now, let's say you play 20 tournaments in one year when you're 14. If all 20 suck, then that's okay, because you're 14, so you've still got your 15 years old. Like 14, when you're 14, which is experience you're getting, right? But when you're 15, you really want to start then getting some good results. So you're like out of the 20 tournaments, maybe 10 are good. Right, and you've got a few top tens, you got a few top fives, maybe a one win or two, maybe you win all of them, then you just you know, then you go in D1, right? But that's the difference. So if you want to go like D1, like you gotta to get top five finishes, some wins in there, but in national events and international events, so you get your wagger points, and your wagger points are gonna help you get up that ranking. So that's it, that's what everyone asks me. It's like, well, isn't D2 golf not any good? And should I not just go to division one? Well, division one, in my opinion, and this is my opinion. It's only worth it if you're in, say, the top 100 school ranking schools. If you're not in top 100, in my opinion, and some coaches won't like this, I don't think it's worth it. Like, unless you go into a program to be 120, 140, and the coach is putting a really good competitive new program in place to improve your team's rankings, because you just won't make nationals. And if you want to be a pro and you don't make nationals, you're not going to get that TV exposure, the exposure to sponsors, playing against the very, very best golfers in the country. Um, and that's why you want to play D1 is because you want to play against the best and then Help yourself elevate to the next level, right? So if you're always like if you're like a two three hundred ranked division one school Then you're never gonna play against those, those top levels. Well, that sounds really powerful today <laughs> So yeah, I mean if a D2 here like these you're playing against the best players in D2 week in week out like these tournaments happen all the time so and even if you're like an NIA school, you play in the D2 tournament. So you get to play against, you know, athletes of your caliber or better. Um, and if you're really good at this level, you're going to get transferred to Division 1. Like those top 50, top 75 schools, you'll get transferred after one or two years if you're super good. So this is a great, like, stepping ground platform. It's almost like if you take English Premier League football, where I'm from, it's like playing in the championship. And then if you do really well, you're going to get promoted to the premiership, right? So that's a good way to look at it if you follow soccer. 
uh, and you're from overseas to understand how these leagues kind of work out here in these divisions. So one way, yeah, you have to have the, um, you have to have a good resume and you got to start that 14, 15 for golf. If you, if you don't have a good resume for three, four years, getting in one of these most competitive programs at division two and like even D1 is just going to be very difficult to do. That's why we like to work with you in young so we can start helping you put together a good competitive resume. The, um, the kind of second point is academics. Parents will love this point, right? So academic, that's what prevented me going to Stanford. So if I could like rewind time and do this again, I would definitely study better because you could be a really good golfer. And I've got a couple of clients now in this predicament, they're really good golfers, but the academics are letting them down from getting into these really top, top schools because they won't let them in. Remember, this is university golf. It's not golf vacation, right? So if you don't qualify academically to that particular university, then they can't admit you, do, 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 doesn't matter how good of a golfer you are, you could be the best of all time, right? You could be the next Tiger Woods, but if you don't have the minimum grades, it doesn't, it doesn't work. You then have to choose a different university based on what they will take academically. So that's the two major ones. There are a lot more factors that go into this, but I want to keep things simple as possible because I know this is all new to you and this is, you know, why I do this because I've done it for so long and we want to educate you guys step by step. But um, I hope you enjoyed the content today. We're literally now coming back into our office, really close to the uh, to the golf course. We're literally about 10 minutes away. So it's nice that we can go visit the players and, and go to these tournaments. We go typically um, in season at least two, three times in a month to different events. So we're gonna start documenting more of these as well for you guys. But anyway, take care. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.